All right, giant growers, thanks and welcome back. Chris Brown, Garden of Giants YouTube channel. And today we are going to talk tomatoes, giant tomatoes. And we're gonna go through a quick video on how to do some proper pruning. Um, now there's pruning before you get the tomato and there's pruning after you get the tomato. Um, we're going to talk about um, some ways that you prune before and then I'll also show you how you can prune after. Um, although I don't have a tomato yet, so it'll probably be more telling you versus actually doing it. But um, when you have a plant here and say you don't have a tomato yet, you're going to want to do some things as the tomato grows um, to ensure proper pruning. Now there's two main ways to go about it. One way is some extreme pruning forcing a mega bloom because of you know potential stress on the plant and then there is also um the the way i've done more of mine than not is allowing it to pretty much grow freely um with the exception of taking off some suckers especially suckers that are kind of in the middle of the plant to really open up airflow and then allowing several tops and when I mean tops, I mean, you know, this would be a top, this would be a top, this would be a top, and that one right back there would be a top. Um, so you can do it that way. That way has worked very well for me. Um, but the first way I'm going to show you here is, is kind of the little bit more extreme method that we'll try on this one individual plant just to kind of show you. So when you're looking at it, the first thing you gotta do, and this really goes for all tomatoes, is first off, any leaf hitting the ground, like this one, you need to take off. Um, leaves hitting the ground or aiming down aren't really going to do much for you. Um, they can hang down as long as they're not touching the ground, but you just need to take off any leaf that is touching the ground or even to be honest with you even near the ground and the reason why let me let me cut this one off here because if the dirt splashes up onto it you have a chance to start getting diseases potentially blight among other diseases um so remember water hitting the ground bouncing soil up onto the leaves is a sure way to get disease onto a tomato plant. Um, so any sort of um, any sort of leaf hitting the ground is a huge no-no. In fact, like look at this. That's how all your leaves are going to be if they're anywhere near the ground. So always take those off, get rid of them. Once you have done that, then you start to look for, um, on this extreme pruning, you start to look for, what do I want? Do I want just two or three main um, stems or main vines? So in this situation, let's see if I can show you here. This, oh, let's move that for a second. Oh, we got a jungle forming here. Okay, so this one here, here is our main stem. This main stem's coming up. Now we have kind of a funky leaf right here that shoots off this way. Um, we'll ignore that for now. I don't see it causing too much issue. This plant's still a little thin, so I'm not going to go in and take that one out. Although this one right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. right there that's going to come off all right so i took that one off as you can see just it was real small but anyways all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go with just this stem and this stem as our two um, that we're going to try to get mega blooms off of. And 
I think I'll add in one more stem just because I let this one go a little longer and I see a mega bloom on a third stem. So we're gonna do three stems on this one. So what does that look like? All right, let's back it up here. Let's see if we can get back at least a little bit here. All right, so to start with, we are gonna take off all suckers. So that's this, all the suckers. Now, a sucker is considered, well, let's go back in real quick. The sucker is considered anything, usually in a notch like this. So the stem going up, leaf going out, stem going up, this, this one right here, right there. That is a sucker. As you can see, it just grows into another another uh, branch. So that's a sucker. So we're gonna take all the suckers off because remember, our goal is to just have three main stems. So there's no point and there's no need for the other, for these suckers. Um, so we're gonna take, let's take this one off. And let's see. It looks like it might have a potential tomato. I'm gonna leave that truss. Actually, that's on our main. That's on our main. So that can stay. I'm just looking for suckers right now. So let's see. There's a little sucker up higher. Gonna take that off. I don't know if you guys can see it. Probably not. And we'll go up. This one actually isn't too full of suckers. Um, we'll take this little one off. When they're real small like this, you can just pull them off. All right. Took the one out of there. Looks like there's one right here. See that one right, right at the tip of my finger? Gonna take that one off. All right, so, and as you can see, right next to it, let's see if I can zoom in here. Got a little mega bloom action going on. And if we look right in front of me here, another nice looking one. Okay, so essentially, we are just going to leave the main stem here with this vine this vine here now this vine does split i will normally i would take this off because this is a sucker um actually i am going to take it off so let's take that one off too because i want to show you the extreme how how extreme we get um all right let's okay we took that one off and then so all we're doing is we're leaving this one right here, that one, this is a first truss. I'll leave it just because we have one on it that honestly doesn't look like it's going to take, but I'll leave it. Uh, we're going to take off these little um, suckers that are just forming right in the kind of the crotch of the plant here. going to take them off right now so we don't have to deal with them later. There's another one right there. And take that off and so then by doing this so another one right up here right there so we're gonna take that one off so again by doing this we're forcing a lot of energy into one two or in this case three stems and that energy what that's gonna do is it's gonna force some megas because that energy going up through there. So megas, I believe, come about because of probably three main reasons. The first reason, and I think the most common, is weather related. Um, if you get cold nights and warm days, you're automatically gonna get some, even on your normal eating tomatoes. Um, so in the spring, you tend to get a lot, and then in the fall, you get some just some beautiful ones and you're always like oh man i got these awesome megas and it's september or october i'll i'll never get them you know pollinated into way off 
because the weather is forcing that. Um, now, I should step back and say some varieties, like your Big Zacks, um, sometimes beef steaks, and, and especially Domingos, are more prone, even your Purple Cherokees, they're more prone to producing Megas, the big, big ones, the fused. Um, and because they're more prone to it, it's easier to get a mega um, with a with the dramatic temperature change. So like, you know, 40s or 50s at night and 80s or 90s during the daytime. That's a perfect setup for some of them. Um, the other two reasons that you might see a mega or other two, I think, possibilities are if you do the extreme pruning. You prune everything off but one or I usually do one or two stems, and that would be the extreme. Now, like I said, on this one, I'm going to leave three because I already have some mega showing. So this is something I should have done probably a couple weeks ago, maybe even longer. And by forcing um, all the energy through just one or two stems um, or vines, however you want to call it, then what you're doing is you're causing... A bit of stress and a bit of power into that plant and a lot of times that will produce a mega and then the third way is fertilizer and, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the with the um, trimming if you trim and you're giving fertilizer that fertilizer could get pumped up in a much more potent uh, uh, manner and I don't mean nitrogen but I mean like if you, eh, I like to do like a a fairly heavy phosphorus and silica with some boron and amino acids and by doing that along with your seaweed and humic um, I feel like you can almost force a mega and it doesn't always work um, there's plenty of times where I've had tomatoes that they just no matter what you do you just get single blossom after single blossom after single blossom but I think your chances are increased much more if you do either a the extreme trimming or b the fertilization um, at a little higher rate and really those two are are kind of hand in hand they're combined you fertilizer or you fertilize a little bit heavier with the extreme trimming and that kind of forces it and then the environmental you're just going to get that no matter what as long as your plant is healthy um a lot like i said a lot of the spring and the and the fall that's all weather related um if it happens you get to make it any other time of the year you're probably doing something right as far as the trimming or the or the um fertilization however in domingos big zacks beefsteak and cherokee i tend to see those blossoms happen a little more and like i said or or if, if if you guys don't know if you're watching and don't know what a mega blossom is it really simply is just a fused blossom so when you look at a blossom like this look at one two three at least three on this one um i'd say at least three are are hooked together there we look over to this one here and you're at least a double and you can tell even on the stem that it looks like two stems there. So you're, uh, let's see if I can get a shot inside here. It doesn't really show, but um, I'll put up a graph. But um, if we look right in the dead center, see that little, I don't know if you guys can see that little hole. Uh, probably not, but that would be the stigma um, these outer yellows right here on my that my fingers holding up that's a petal the yellow I'm touching right now that is a stamen that is where the pollen is and then like I said the stigma is going to be the end of the pistol which is where Let's see if I, they're right there in the dead center. That is the sticky part where the pollen will fall to and get caught on the, you know, the pollen will get caught onto the um, stigma and then it'll go up the style into the ovaries. And that is 
in the pistil, which is the female part of the flower. And that is how a tomato is produced. Because the stamen is so close to the pistil, most tomatoes are self-pollinated because the stamen hugs, basically hugs the pistil. And the this, this, uh, stigma is the end of the pistil that's very sticky. And when that pollen falls out, it, it, it has no choice but to stick to that, that um, the, the stigma. And so why do, why do mega blossoms not get pollinated at a very good rate? A lot of times it's honestly because of this right here. See how this is, this mega is not hanging down like it should be. I mean, it's, it's better than most, but a lot of them are sideways or even up in the air. When they're like this, the pollen cannot fall out. Bees cannot move it. Even shaking it and tapping it for the most part is not going to um, help pollinate that, that, that tomato. The pollen will simply sit in there or even sit or fall down the wrong way and it will become, the pollen will become old and not viable. And then at some point when you come out and you knock it around or the wind really picks up and some of it falls out, it is not able to pollinate these flowers. So a lot of mega blooms do not get pollinated for that reason alone. The other reason is if we look really close at this one, um, the, the anthers, which, which hold all the pollen, it's not the yellow petals, but the yellow petals under the, the, uh, these ones, right? Yeah, you can't really see it. Maybe I'll try to put an arrow on, on here, but the anthers in the megas are, are all messed up in the sense that they don't hug very close to the pistol or to the stigma or, or the pistol which is the the entire female um the over, ovary the style and the uh, stigma um they don't hug as close as in a normal one so the pollen is able to fall freely away from it so when we get into maybe i'll jump right into it here when we get into pollination yes tapping this shaking it even flicking the you know flicking the thing i wouldn't do it probably quite that hard that will all release pollen but i believe truly the number one way to to get pollen not just to fall but to kind of explode in a little explosion that will ensure that the stigma the sticky part on the end of the pistol um allows the pollen to grab onto it to stick onto it and that is an electric toothbrush why because let me turn that off why because when this hits it the pollen literally explodes into a cloud of dust like think of it as like little little fairy dust or whatever it just explodes and because it does that explosion um it's going to have a much better chance of hitting the, the stigma. And, and remember, all you need is one grain of pollen to start producing a tomato. Now, the advantage and disadvantage of that is if you only get a couple grains of pollen that take, you know, you get something like the world record tomato last year that only had 100 seeds. You know, even though it was 11.65 pounds, it only had 100 seeds. Why? Because only 100 grains of pollen hit the, the, uh, the stigma. And went down to the ovaries and created, you know, a hundred seeds. Uh, we want more like three, four, 500. I've even seen some in the 700 to a thousand um, seed range. So I think by using an electric toothbrush, it increases your chance of getting that pollen to hit that stigma and, and then thus getting a much better pollination, not just for a, a fruit in general, but for better seed production as well so real quick i'm just going to show you that's going to get a little loud here but i'm going to show you the proper way to do this um, it does work if there's a lot of pollen right down here if you if you vibrate it with the 
with the electric toothbrush but really if you can get right up next to the and, and what you want to do um you don't have to touch the flower itself although that's not going to hurt it but right where the stem and the flower meet if you can if you can vibrate that a little you generally are going to get a cloud so uh plug your ears or turn it down this is a little bit annoying All right, just like that. And the best time of day to do it is honestly probably 10 to noon. You wanna do it after the, the pollen has dried. So every morning, new pollen is created and that pollen has to dry, either from the dew, the humidity, whatever. And I find that 10 to noon is kind of the sweet spot for having the most pollen. Now, can you do it before? Yes, some will fall out, the, the pollen that has been dried. And can you do it after? Yes, pollen will fall out throughout the day um, unless you do um, kind of the explosion with the toothbrush. Um, then the you would have to go back with the electric toothbrush, you know, at three or four and get any late maturing pollen um, to kind of take over. Um, so that is in a nutshell, I think the best way to pollinate and the best way to trim, to try not only to get megas, um, but to kind of keep your, or get your plant ready for Omega. And then the other way to, what I'll do is I'll put out another video a little later and that will show you guys once I have a tomato, the proper way to trim the plant. Once you have your desired tomato that you want to go for competition, to grow the biggest you can grow. I will show you the exact way I do the trimming, what I do, and then also we can show you, um, maybe in that video or a future one, how you have to maintain through that 40 to 50 days that you grow that tomato. Um, that's re really important and really key, I think, to getting a very large tomato. So thanks for watching. I know this was a little bit long, but it was the first one about tomatoes, really. So I wanted to kind of be in-depth, as in-depth as I could, because I know a lot of you have tomatoes that are just about getting to this point where they're a foot and a half, two feet tall. They're starting to pop out megas. Um, or you are maybe even a little shorter and you maybe want to get some megas and they're not showing up yet. So um, do some of that trimming I just talked about and maybe throw a little extra phosphorus, um, amino acids, silica, um, seaweed, humic, um, you know, throw that on there. Um, don't go absolutely crazy, but just throw enough on that it's more than normal, more than your normal soil. Um, add it into your rotation of feeding. And what that's gonna do is with that trimming, you're gonna kind of force power. And, and what that does is it puts a slight stress on the plant, which then I believe helps cause these megas. Along with, you know, and the weather, like I said, is the other one. Um, but thank you so much, guys. I hope this helped you. Any questions, please comment. If you like the video, like, subscribe. I'm gonna throw out more videos, especially if you are interested in these tomatoes at all, definitely subscribe. And we're going to uh, show you how to hopefully, you, you never know, in the giant world, you just never know, but hopefully grow a monster. And I think anything over seven pounds is extremely good and extremely big tomato. And what in my book, an absolute monster. So we're gonna try to show you guys how to grow seven pounders or bigger. Um, obviously a 10 pound would be just a dream. And then, uh, you know, anything over that, just almost miraculous. But um, thank you so much and grow them big.